this is day three, day four of uh, a pair of beavers moving into my empty pond. It's amazing. Look how high the pond is already. It's freaking crazy. I put some uh, saplings down here from the road. They're getting slaughtered by the road crew, so uh, I, I cut them and put them down here. Beavers are chewing them. It's great. Don't know where they're staying, though. They're going to build a lodge, I hope. We'll see. I'm going to keep monitoring this. So this time of year, which is early spring, there's nothing green yet. Beavers love to dig up the tubers. That's a tuber right here from lilies, water lilies. They love that. Well, they've dug that out. And you know what? what's amazing is this will just sink again and it'll regrow. And by the way, when they defecate, this, the, um, it'll regrow from there too. There they are. I see them down at the pond, at the bridge. Oh my God, at the dam. I see one of them. You won't be able to see it because it's a GoPro. It doesn't zoom in, so. Wow, neat. Okay, I took my time coming down to this end of the pond. They're here. I just don't see them. But you'll notice that the water's right at the top of the dam. That's how you can tell beavers are home. That's amazing. I've not seen it like this for five years. Wow. And I thought I was going to have an empty pond this year. How cool. The great thing about beavers is that they create, well, they freaking created all the watersheds in, uh, up here in Algonquin. And what's cool, well, them along with the glaciers, but what's cool about beavers is that they create these ponds and all the wild ones. So the deer, moose, bear, they all come to the ponds to drink and cool down and you know what? Because they can't go to the lake. There's a beaver right there. I saw her. She just, served, she just went under the surface right there. She'll pop up somewhere here. I have to be really careful walking here because I don't know where the beavers are sitting down. They do not have a lodge. So that means they could be in a bank burrow. And I know for a fact there's one right there. That's where I think they are. Then again, I don't know and I don't want to startle them. These guys are brand new here and I don't want to scare them away. Let's go check out the lower side of the dam. See what's going on. Okay, we're on the lower side of the dam now. And as you can see, it clearly isn't holding up. It's holding tons of water back. Tons. <clears throat> but it's still allowing water through. It's coming over the top and through it. So the beavers will plug it as, as when they need to and as far as they need to. Boy, I still want to put my canoe in that water. I can't though. I got to think about them. If I put my canoe in there, I'll, tra I'll scare them away. For sure. These guys are super important to the health of any woodland, especially here in in Canada. Um, pretty much every watershed here was created by these beavers and by glacial action, but the beavers are the ones who control the water. It's unbelievable what they can do. It's just amazing. I've seen deer, I've seen moose, bear, all kinds of different animals come down to this pond to get, uh, to get their fill of water. And they, they'll wade through the pond uh, just to cool down and also to remove ticks off their bodies because ticks, yeah, they, they just can't stand being underwater. They breathe through their skin. So well, regardless, the point is, is that these animals such as the bear, the moose, and, and other guys, they can't go to the lakes anymore. It's too populated with people. Anyhow, I'm going to call these guys Betty and Bucky 2024. And we'll see how long they last. I mean, I'm a little bit worried because uh, they've they've increased their their living space so to speak to across the road and that is not my property and across the road if they dam it up and they have they've they've built a what's called a control dam on the far far side of the road what that does it controls the water coming into the main pond because their lodge it's all about their lodge and about their uh, drying off platform and everything else in the lodge but uh, 
Now these guys, they feed on trees, uh, plants, and things like that. Now the trees that they feed on, they eat the cambium layer, which is basically the bark, right? And uh, they peel it. They peel it almost like a corn of cob. It's, 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 I should say a cob of corn, right? Okay. Anyway, they peel it like that. It's kind of cool to watch. But all the trees that they take, um, they grow back quite rapidly. You know, they move sticks, rocks, mud, pond debris, all kinds of stuff to build this dam, and you can't get through it. This thing is strong. Beavers naturally have a rotation pattern about anywhere from five to ten years. That just means that as they chomp their way through the uh, through the trees in the area, they'll move on to another spot and uh, can, uh, create another pond there. And this pond will start to dry up. It never right quite dries up, but um, within the five to ten year span, the trees that they took down. The saplings will have re-sprouted from the roots, and uh, they're good to go again. So I'm quite happy to see them here this year. It's it, it's amazing. It, honestly, it's amazing. Now, the previous pair of beavers that were here, I made the mistake. It was a big mistake. I made the mistake of befriending them. And, uh, yeah, I called them Betty and Bucky also, but whatever. Uh, Betty, the female, she would come up and sit on my foot and... Uh, clean herself and do all kinds of things and eat and it was a really amazing experience however i think they paid the price for that they thought that humans were cool to hang around that's not the case i found one dead beaver a couple of years ago floating in the pond it had been shot by a 22 caliber rifle yeah i dissected it to find out what killed it and uh, so somebody was using the pond as target practice right so I'm not going to make that mistake this year. I will keep the beavers at arm's length so that uh, they don't trust humans. I, I can't have them trusting humans because they'll pass that on to their offspring and they'll get slaughtered too anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep filming this and seeing what I can come up with and see what these beavers can teach me. It's quite a fascinating thing. If you have a home or a cottage that's on waterfront and you want to protect your trees from, uh, you know, beaver predation, so to speak, if you don't want to lose your trees, it's simple. Just go to the hardware store, buy some hardware cloth, and wrap the tree. Make sure that you wrap it so that it's got lot the, the, the cloth that goes around. It's a wire mesh. The wire mesh that goes around the tree uh, doesn't actually touch the bark of the tree. You don't need to. It's got to stand about four feet high, okay? It has to. Because um, if it stands four feet high, the beavers can't chew anything higher than that anyway. So, um, yeah, and eventually the that just blends in with the surrounding... It just blends in. It's, the, the hardware cloth starts to, you know, go a darker color, and it's, it's not in your face. Anyway, it works out perfect, and you don't have to harm the beavers, so it's a good thing.
if you're out hiking or camping, take a few minutes and sit down beside a beaver pond. This, these ponds are the lifeblood of the forest, I swear. The amount of animals I've seen come to these ponds, it's just incredible. Bear, deer, wolf. Yeah, it's fascinating. And not to mention the fact that just sitting down and just not thinking about anything and just observing is just incredible. Anyway, enough of that. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, happy hiking.